Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the atropo-selective total synthesis of darobactin A. This work was carried out by the Baran Group at Scripps and a preprint was uploaded to Chem Archive. Darobactin A was first isolated in 2019 by the Lewis Group from Photorabdis bacteria. It shows high potency against gram-negative bacteria through a novel mechanism where both macrocycles bind to the bacterial insertase complex BAM-A that is located on the outer membrane of the pathogen and this interrupts folding of the membrane proteins, resulting in the death of the bacteria. Just seven days prior to this work being uploaded, another preprint was uploaded detailing a similar route hinging on the same microcyclization strategy as the Bram paper. This was carried out by a collaboration between David Sarla and Merck. In Baran's paper, he states that the entirety of these studies, as well as an earlier version of this synthesis, was disclosed to Merck in June of 2021 under a confidentiality agreement. This macrocyclization is a key challenge in constructing this molecule, as it exhibits a property known as atropoisomerism. This is a type of axial chirality that arises because of hindered rotation about a single bond. In darobactin A, this occurs at the indole groups, which are unable to rotate due to the conformationally constrained macrocycles and therefore can exist as isomers where the nitrogen atom points either up or down. Controlling this isomerism is a significant challenge as once the macrocycle is formed, the conformation is locked in place and cannot be interconverted. The retrosynthetic strategy for this molecule involves using well-established peptide coupling methodology to construct the polypeptide backbone. Meanwhile, they could use CH activation to install one of the necessary pendant groups. In order to set the stage for cyclization, they would use decarboxylative cross-coupling to install alkyne groups, and these would then be reacted with alpha haloanilines to perform a troposelective Laroque cyclizations, which would complete the macrocycles. So let's start with the synthesis and look at the construction of some of these amino acid building blocks. Aspartic acid methyl ester is first activated with DIC and the activated ester then reacts with tetrachlorohydroxythalamide to form a redox active ester. This could then take part in a decarboxylate of cross coupling. A nickel 2 chloride complex bearing a diterpbutyl bipyridine ligand first undergoes reaction with a zinc alkyne species and forms an alkynylate nickel 2 complex. This can reduce the redox active ester, forming a nickel 3 intermediate, together with a radical produced from the fragmentation of the redox active ester and the loss of carbon dioxide. This combines with the nickel complex, oxidizing it to nickel 4, which then undergoes a reductive elimination, forming the carbon carbon bond and producing the tar compound in a 51% yield on a decagram scale. This product was then subject to a Rayleigh oxidation. This reaction is more often seen with alkenes, but in this case reacts with the alkyne in a similar manner. Terpbutyl hydrogen peroxide is first reacted with selenium dioxide to form an adduct that can undergo an ene reaction with the alkyne. This abstracts a proton, forming a double bond, while the selenium ends up bonded to the terminal carbon of the alkyne. The oxygen can then attack this newly formed double bond, and this restores the alkyne together with the cleavage of the carbon selenium bond and the elimination of terpbutoxide. This selenium species is hydrolyzed upon workup and produced the alcohol in a 60% yield as a 3 to 2 mixture of diastereomers. Both of these isomers were required for the initial root scouting. In the next step, the methyl ester was cleaved using lithium hydroxide and hydrogen peroxide and the newly revealed carboxylic acid was subject to a peptide coupling using HATU. The acid is first deprotonated and this attacks the coupling reagent, eliminating hydroxobenzotriazole. This can then attack as a nucleophile, eliminating a urea byproduct and forming an activated ester. The free amine of the coupling partner reacts with this ester to form the product in a 77% yield. The SEM protecting group was then cleaved using TBAF to produce building block A. To produce building block B, the same alkynylated methyl ester that was produced using the decarboxylative cross-coupling was hydrolyzed under the same conditions as seen before and coupled with another amino acid using HATU. This compound had an allyl-protected carboxylic acid and this was deprotected 
using tetricus triphenylphosphine palladium. This coordinates to the double bond and activates it, allowing for the elimination of the carboxylate which is protonated upon workup to produce building block B. The allyl cation that is generated by this reaction is scavenged by N-methylmorpholine. With these building blocks now complete, they then turn their attention to functionalizing a lactam that would serve as another part of the backbone and also produce the required dependent group. This was done using CH activation. The CPZ protected lactam bears an aminoquinoline directing group that first coordinates to palladium acetate. This guides the palladium to the top face of the molecule which activates the CH bond, allowing for the hydrogen to be abstracted by the acetate ligand and a carbon-palladium bond to be formed. This species then underwent an oxidative addition into an aromatic carbon-iodine bond, which was further promoted by the presence of silver acetate. A reductive elimination then followed, forming the carbon-carbon bond in a 51% yield on only the top face of the ring. Taking this forward, they then performed a reductive ring opening using sodium borohydride. The hydride attacks the lactam, initially forming a hemiaminal that can then open to produce the aldehyde and the amine. This aldehyde is further reduced by another equivalent of sodium borohydride, and the primary alcohol produced by this reaction was then protected using benzoyl chloride. Having served its purpose, the CBZ group was then removed. TMS chloride first reacts with the carbamate, activating the oxygen and making it more electrophilic. Iodide then attacks the carbon centre to displace the aromatic ring, and the silylated ester is then reacted with methanol and hydrochloric acid to promote a decarboxylation, producing the target amine. The free amine produced by this reaction then took part in a peptide coupling reaction, again using HATU, which coupled the amine with building block A. With both the alkyne and the alpha bromoamide now in place, the first of the macrocyclization reactions could be carried out. This was achieved using a Laroc cyclization. In this reaction, palladium undergoes oxidative addition into the carbon bromine bond and then forms a pi complex with the alkyne. A migratory insertion occurs, forming the carbon carbon bond, and the palladium then coordinates to the amide, which is deprotonated with diisopropyl ethylamine. A reductive elimination completes the reaction and forms the carbon nitrogen bond. The product was formed as a single atropisomer and a 41% yield using the TES protected alkyne and 3.5 equivalents of bis tri phosphine palladium. However, this reaction could be rendered catalytic using the alkyne with the terminal proton, which produced the target in a 61% yield with only 0.3 equivalents of palladium. This suggests that there is a large degree of pre-organisation in the acyclic precursor, as the bulky TES group is typically required to ensure the correct regiochemistry. In the next step, a Mitsunobo reaction was carried out. This used tetramethylazidodicarboxamide as the coupling reagent, which was activated by trimethylphosphine. The resulting anionic species deprotonates the nitrophenol, while the secondary alcohol attacks the cationic phosphorus. This activates the oxygen as an electrophile, and the phenolate displaces it in an SN2 manner, inverting the stereochemistry. Taking this forward, the Bok group was deprotected with hydrochloric acid and the resulting amine was coupled with building block B, again using HATU. The nitro group could then be reduced to reveal the desired amine. This was done using iron and acetic acid. The acid protonates the nitro group, while the iron acts as a reducing agent and supplies electrons, allowing for the elimination of water to form a nitroso intermediate. Further reduction produces the amine. With this in hand, they could then carry out the second macrocyclization. This was performed using the same conditions as before and produced the macrocycle in a 67% yield, again as a single atropisomer. With both macrocycles now formed, they entered the end game of the synthesis. The compound was first reacted with potassium carbonate in methanol. This hydrolyzed the indole acetate and the pendant benzoate and produced a methyl ester on the northwestern fragment. The molecule was then reacted with mesochloride which mesylated the pendant alcohol, and also cleaved the TES group on the second indole ring. This mesylate was reacted with potassium cyanide and tetrabutyl ammonium hydrogen sulfate to produce a nitrile. A reduction protection sequence was then carried out on this nitrile. Nickel dichloride was reacted with sodium borohydride 
to produce nickel boride, which reduced both the nitrile group and also the amino quinoline ring. The Bach anhydride, also present in this reaction, protected the newly formed primary amine. The reduction of the amino quinoline ring was quite convenient as it allowed for the removal of the direction group using triphosgene. This compound is very electrophilic and was attacked by the nitrogen, eliminating a chloride anion and one equivalent of phosgene. This chloride then acts as a nucleophile and another equivalent of phosgene is eliminated. The amide can then attack the remaining acyl chloride, forming a carbamide. This bulky electron withdrawing group twists the amide out of planarity and reduces the electron density in the amide system, making it much more susceptible to hydrolysis. This directing group could therefore be selectively cleaved by trimethyl tin hydroxide without the hydrolysis of any of the other amides or esters present in the molecule. With this directing group now removed, the carboxylic acid was subject to a peptide coupling, this time using EDC and HOAT. The hydroxyazobenzotriazole increases the reactivity of the activated ester and reduces racemization of the stereocenter. Reacting this with the peptide coupling partner completed the backbone of Darabactin, leaving only the functionalization of the pendant groups to be completed. The compound was first reacted with ammonia, which aminolyzed the methyl ester to form a primary amide. A global deprotection was then carried out using TFA, TMS triflate, thioanisole and ethane dithiol. The TMS triflate activates the oxygens by silation and the thioanisole acts as a nucleophile to displace the benzyl group and suppress side reactions which are often observed when TFA TMS triflate systems are used. These conditions cleaved all of the protecting groups present in the molecule and completed the synthesis of Darabactin A. Well that's it for this week. In the next video we will look at the total synthesis of Coscutamine.